Yes. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. How has your week been? My week has been okay. Mm -hmm. I thank God, yeah. Where are you joining us from? From Mombasa. Wow. Uh, I wish I wish I could speak Swahili, but my Swahili is so horrible. So kindly just bear with me. Thank you so much for joining today's uh, today's Vespers. Uh, we call it Inspirational Friday. We are sorry for having taken long to begin the meeting. We just had a little bit of technical hitch. So kindly apologies from our end. Uh, so one on one, we'll just have a word of prayer and then begin immediately. Uh, today, I want to invite one of us to uh, uh, say a word of prayer even as we begin. Let me see. Uh, Douglas, Douglas Areba, I don't know whether you are in a position to pray with us. Okay, seemingly Douglas is uh, not close. Uh, let me have uh, Tim. Tim, are you in a position to pray with us? Happy Sabbath. Hello. Happy Sabbath. How are you? Douglas, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, but you're breaking. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's, uh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Are you in a position to pray with us? Uh, it's all right, it's all right. Uh, it seems that we will be having a network problem here. Uh, you, you, request me, you requested me to pray or? Sure. Wow, uh, could be my network is so horrible or uh, uh, his network from his end. Uh, I don't know whether you managed to capture that, Douglas. Okay, so uh, allow me to pray uh, as we begin. So let's humble ourselves as we pray. Our kind and everlasting master, we've gathered together this wonderful Sabbath Eve. Dear Lord, we come before thee just as we are. We've had a lot of challenges this week. Some of us have a lot of highlights this week. Others have reasons to thank you because you've been there for them, dear Lord. And others still have some pending needs that they, that they have for you this evening. Father, we come before thee, we commit tonight, speak unto thy able hands, dear Lord, you may use him as a vessel, even as he speaks, Father, may we hear you speak through him. Guide us as we begin even to the end, for I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So uh, our topic today is a very interesting one. It's uh, we are needed. We are needed. You can personalize it as I am needed. And uh, our speaker today is called Jared Okello. Uh, much information about him he'll do as he introduces himself. So I don't want to take much time. I want to welcome him to start us off. Welcome on board, Jared. You can uh, begin. Okay, thank you. Uh... That is building. Sure. Did I get the name right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for um, the invitation through our brother Tony, uh, so that I can be able to share with you today on the Word of God. And uh, sorry, I think I'm mostly in a poor lighting, but uh, I hope my face can be seen uh, by all of us. And uh, I'm thanking God for the little light that he has given me. I think my skin is a little bit uh, melanin or something, a dark chocolate or whatever it is. But uh, I believe I can still be seen by all of us. Uh, may God bless us this Sabbath evening and uh, allow me just to uh, whisper prayer as we get into the word of God. Father in heaven, we are very grateful for this evening. 
as we open the pages of the scripture, please speak to us again. Uh, this be my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you, Belden, again for sharing with us and uh, the title we we are needed. And uh, I, I tried uh, personalizing it the way you have done. I I am needed. Uh, I also thought of um, they are needed. <laughs> but I, I, I realized the we are needed uh, works much better for me and for all of us, probably as we, we shall understand uh, there by and by uh, about um, the gospel call that Christ is giving us. Uh, the aspect of the I am needed probably has left a lot to do with, uh, with, with me, but the aspect of we are needed has left a lot to do with the uh, what part am I playing in uh, the salvation story that God has called me out for? I was just um, reading from uh, some book, Christ Object Lesson, page 415. And uh, the writer makes these very interesting words. It is the darkest of misapprehension of God that is enshrouding the world. Men are losing their knowledge of his character. It has been misunderstood and misinterpreted. At this time, a message from God is to be proclaimed. And, and the writer makes this message outrightly very clear, and she makes mention of these words. A message illuminating in its influence and saving in its power. His character is to be made known into the darkness of the world, is to be shed the light of his glory, the light of his goodness, his mercy and truth. And, and, and while I was brooding over these words, um, there is a song uh, that, that says loosely from the language where I come from, uh, that is uh, Luo Nyanza in Kenya. Um, it, it says, Donge do yengre kume. I was trying to get this in, in English, and, and the writer, I think, of the song makes the title, May He Depend on You. And, and, and I was just wondering the, the call to this particular music. And, and is asking, may, be, can, can God be able to depend on you? And in a very soft way, asking, may he depend on you? The, listen to the words of, um, of, of, the, of this song. In the warfare that is raging, for the truth and for the light, when the conflict fierce is raging, with the powers of the night, God needs people brave and true May he then depend on you. So the truth says, see, they come on subtle pinions, come in strong satanic might. Powers come and dark dominions for the regions of the night. God requires the brave and the true. May he then depend on you. And then the last stanza says, from his throne, the father sees us. Angels are helping us to prevail. Our leader true is Jesus, and we shall not and cannot fail. Triumph crowns the brave and true. May the Lord depend on you. So, so even as we delve into this discourse of we are needed, stanza three gives us an assurance that the need in which we are called, angels are helping us. Our leader, true, is the person who also needs us there, Christ Jesus. And he makes the assurance, we shall not and cannot fail. And he tells us, hey, triumph crowns, the brave and true are awaiting us. Can he be able to depend on you? Listen to this person probably who's saying, can God depend on you? And giving us the assurance today, his name, Christ Jesus. Paul speaks to him in this interesting way as he makes mention of him in the book of Philippians chapter two, verses five uh, downwards. My version, the paraphrase version, King James version says the, of, of the message, you know, it, it is a paraphrase of King James version by uh, a writer, a friend of mine called Eugene Peterson. 
he makes mention of that Philippians chapter two from verses five this way. Think of yourself the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but he didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status, no matter what, not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of the deity, took on the status of a slave and became human. And, and I wondered why must Christ, who has the epitome of God, who has it all, who created everything that is required, get to such a kind of a level that it takes the form of a slave and becoming human, the creature that he created. To me, it's a call telling us that indeed we are needed. If someone can get to this level, if someone can get to this status, as, as, as Paul talks him, taking the form, the status of a slave. I think your King James Russian says, taking the form of a bound servant. It is an indication that indeed we are needed. Having become human, verse 8 says, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. He said he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of that death is a death of crucifixion. Why must Christ go through all this? Simply because we indeed are needed. Such a kind of a love that the right of Christ's object lesson once the whole world, once the world enshrouded in darkness to be revealed upon, baffles me at the end of the day. I was reading the same writer making mention, and, and I think this one I can be able to try uh, share my screen over here so that we can all of us read a very interesting uh, discourse for me at the end of the day when I, when I read through this, it was a little bit uh, very interesting, these interesting words uh, said over here. Let me try to share my screen. Yeah, there is this interesting part over here. Desire of Ages, page 25. In stooping to take upon himself humanity, Christ revealed a character the opposite of the character of Satan. But he stepped still lower in the path of humiliation. I wish I would have boldened that and even made it a little bit bigger. Being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. In fact, as the high priest laid aside his gorgeous pontifical robes and officiated in the white linen dress of the commonest priest, so Christ took the form of a servant and offered sacrifice, himself the priest, himself the victim. He was wounded, quoting from Isaiah, for our transgression. We are needed. He was bruised for our iniquities. Why is he being bruised for our iniquities? Because we are needed. The chastisement of finishes, and the writer finishes up with these words, which to me was very strong, that Christ was treated as we deserve, that we might be treated as he deserves. He was condemned for our sins in which he had no share, that we might be justified by his righteousness in which we had no share. He suffered the death which was ours, that we might receive the life which was his. And why is all this happening? Because we are needed with the stripes. Indeed, we are healed at the end of the day. I wish I would jump to my seat now and praise God because of what Christ has done for us. In fact, if you're wondering of this wondrous love, he picks it because at times we don't understand the nature of his love for us. And, and, he, 
and in his ministry, as he came down, he picked some of the parables to talk to us about this love. Listen to one of the parables that this Christ Jesus, who needs us, began speaking at the end of the day. In the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 44, going down to verse 46, the Bible says these interesting words. God's kingdom is like a treasure hidden in a field for years and then accidentally found by a trespasser. The finder is ecstatic. What a find! And proceeds to sell everything he owns to raise money and buy that field. Or, or verse 45 says, or God's kingdom is like a jewel merchant on the hand for excellent pearls. Finding one that is verse 46, that is flawless, he immediately sells everything and buys it. Uh, I, I, I wish you'd picked up, you, you, you just picked up some of those terms that Eugene Peterson picks, make, mention as he talks about this parable. And, and this is Christ speaking about how his kingdom looks like. So he says his kingdom is like looking for treasures that are hidden in the field. Why are they looking for treasures hidden in the field? Because those treasures are needed. And, and when the finder finds that treasure, it's, it's an ecstatic moment. And, and he proceeds to sell everything that he owns. Why? Because he wants to raise money to buy the field. And why is he buying the field? Because he has found the treasure that are needed. In fact, initially, when I, I, I read of this, this parable, uh, of this hidden treasure, I, I thought that God's kingdom is like a treasure, and the treasure here is, is finding Christ. And, and then when we find Christ, we, we are so ecstatic about it, and we leave everything. In fact, in, in, in one of my initial discourses when um, I was a small boy, we, we used to sing this song, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. And, 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 and I was so happy about my finding of a treasure. And, and the treasure is the finding of God's kingdom. But, but I, I, I realized with time, at the end of the day, there was some moments of turning back in my life in as much as I was singing, no turning back. But I realized there was some element of turning back at the end of the day. It's until the other day that in the reading again, I, I found a very interesting part at the end of the day and 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 and, and let me let me share this uh this this interesting part again so that we can be able to to read it together with with all of us it's a very interesting uh finding that i i, I i've really enjoyed um this um part over here this is from the book again christ object lesson page 118. the writer makes mention these interesting words, the parable of the merchant man seeking godly pearls has a double significance. That means it has a dual significance. Quite interesting, and uh, she makes mention of those dual significance. It says, it applies to not only to men, it applies not only to men as seeking the kingdom of heaven, but to Christ as seeking his lost inheritance. So there is the first part that me and us who are needed seeking God's kingdom, but also to Christ as seeking his lost inheritance. 
And how does he describe then his lost inheritance? Matthew describes them as treasures. Matthew talks to them as pearls of great prices. Matthew makes mention of them as one that is without flaw. You know, when I look at probably Belden, I may not know you. Probably we have met or I may have some part of your history. If I look at probably Edwin, whom I may not know, or I know Ayas Mudembwa, I look at James Manis, I look at all of us who are gathered here together, Douglas Areba. I think probably I've met Douglas Areba. I, I, I might find flaws in them. I might see the way they are herring in life. I might see the things that they lack at the end of the day. By the way, it is true, the world is full of people who know much a lot about our flaws and our weaknesses as at the end of the day. But to Christ as seeking his lost inheritance, Christ refers to us as treasures without flaws. In fact, look at the writings again still, Christ, the heavenly merchant man, seeking godly, godly, goodly, I think that the goodly pulse, I think that should be the, the right uh, uh, pronunciation, goodly pulse. So in lost humanity, the pearl of price, in a man defiled and ruined by sin, he saw the possibilities of redemption. Hearts that have been the battleground of the conflict with Satan and that have been rescued by the power of love are more precious to the Redeemer than are those who have never fallen. Mm. This to me is very interesting. And, th th and this is why I am talking about a we and us who are needed and us who have fallen in sin are who long and yearn to be delivered by the power of love are more precious to the Redeemer than those who have never fallen at the end of the day. As she finishes up those words, she writes these interesting words. God looked upon humanity, not as defiled and worthless. He looked upon it in Christ, saw it as it might become through the redeeming love. He collected all the riches of the universe and laid them down in order to buy the pearl. And that pearl is us. Indeed, we are needed if Christ collected all the riches of the universe and laid them down in order to buy us. That tells you of how Christ values us as humanity. And Jesus, having found it, Jesus, having found us, resets in us his own diadem. In fact, he makes mention in the book of Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 17, they shall be mine. We shall be his, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when he makes up his jewel. And, and, and that's why I, I, I just wrote this briefly. The heart then and the soul of the gospel is not what we have given up for Jesus. It is about what Jesus has given up for us. It is not about me. It is not about me living some type of dress, food, or lifestyle for Jesus. No, it's about Jesus and himself crucified at the end of the day. Why did he do this thing? Because he needs us. He wants us. He wants all of us at the end of the day to be with him. No wonder Paul picks it. And I think probably not, not, not Paul, if I look at what Paul picks, I remember writing today on uh, some of my status uh, today, uh, some interesting parts over here, that God answers our prayers, not because we are good, but because he is good. And this is the character that God wants his children to be able to propagate and tell everyone outside over there that because of this goodness, I think Jeremiah said, we are not consumed. I, I, I also tweaked again on my status uh, today on my WhatsApp, quoting Psalms chapter 100 verses 4 and verses 5. He says, enter with the password, and the password is thank you. Make yourself at home, talking praise, thank him, worship him, 
For God is sheer beauty. That is verses five. For God is sheer beauty. All generous, God generous in love, loyal, always, never, and at the end of the day. So Paul makes mention of this beautiful Jesus Christ that needs all of us that wants us to get into his kingdom with a password of a thank you for what he has done for us. Paul makes mention of him, these interesting words, Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, says these words, Christ arrives right on time to make the purchase happen. He didn't and does not wait for us to get ready. You know, at times we want to people to get ready. We want them to dress nicely. We want them to come to church already polished in, in the manner that we have prescribed to them in the manner that we want them to handle themselves in the presence of the Lord. But Christ does not wait for us to get ready. He presented himself for this sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we had been so weak. We had not been so weak. Paul continues saying, we, would, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand, as Paul made mention, someone dying for a person worth dying for. And we can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But he makes this interesting words. But God, that's the last part of it, verses 8, but God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatsoever to him. My dear friend, I can't say I am needed. I'll be too selfish with this love. I can't say they are needed. I'll be leaving myself out of the question. And that's why I picked the theme and the title telling me that we are all needed telling me that as I walk down the street and I meet a brother and I, need a, I meet a sister, I see that sister as the part of the we at the end of the day that I needed. As I meet a brother languishing in sin, I don't look unto him and turn the other way around like those people who left the Samaritan, the, that, the, that guy who was beaten by thieves, dying over there and rushing for their godly religious activities. I would look at a we who are needed. That's why Romans chapter 5, still reading from verses 9 downward, says these interesting words. Now that we are set right with God, by means of this sacrificial death, the consummate blood sacrifice, there is no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. If when we were at our worst, we were put on friendly terms, with God by the sacrificial death of his son. Now that we are at our best, just think of how our lives will expand and deepen by means of his resurrection life. Now that we are actually receiving this amazing friendship with God, we are no longer content to simply say it in plodding prose. Paul says, we sing and shout our praises to God through Jesus the Messiah. And he deliberately uses the word we because he wants everyone involved. In fact, if you looked at Paul's writing as he gets towards the book of Romans, he had initially talked about the Gentiles. He was referring to the them. Then initially, after, after talking about the Gentiles, the them, then he was talking about the us, when he was talking about the Jews, the people who are enjoying the religious activities that God has set them apart. And then he finalizes and saying, what do you think? Are they any better than us? Then he finishes up and says, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. So Paul says, hey, the them and the us, we are all fallen short of the glory of God. And all of us, the we are set up right with God by the means of his sacrificial death. And Paul says, now when we realize this, we're not only content in writing it in prose, we sing and shout our praises to God through Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And I think that is what we at times have uh, lost sight of when we look at the gospel. We only think of us and us and us and them and them and them at the end of the day, instead of looking corporately the we 
human beings in need of God's grace. I tend to think in my mind as Christ comes in seeking us, godly pals, as he sees and other people probably in our eyes seeing the kind of pals he is getting, we probably might even be able to challenge him and probably the devil who does this quite often. It tells Christ as he's seeking us. He says, Jesus, that one is broken. And Christ says, yes, I can see Jared is broken, but he's needed. He looks at another person. He says, hey, why are you too bothered with that one? He's a drug addict. And Christ probably responds. He says, yes, I can see, but he or she is equally needed. He looks at one and as he finds a pearl of great price, a prostitute in our eyes and in the eyes of the world and the devil points out a finger probably through us and makes mention that's a prostitute Christ. And Christ says, yes, I see and I know, but that prostitute is needed. And Christ shops around, finds a liar along the way in our language and we definitely know how they are lying their teeth out. And Christ says, yes, I know, but even that liar is needed. Indeed, why are they needed? And Christ responds, it has costed me everything and I will buy them broken. I will buy them drug addict. I will buy them the prostitutes. I will buy them the liars. I will buy them the ones who are disrupting the saints at the end of the day. If perchance they will be convinced of my character of love because I need everyone at the end of the day. Why? Because God extends his matchless grace to all of us at the end of the day. I was listening. If this is what God has done for me, my response, as Matthew Kelly says, these interesting words, Matthew Kelly says, in a land where there are no musicians, in a land where there are no storytellers, teachers and poets, in a land where there are no men and women of vision and leadership, in a land where there are no legions, saints and champions, in a land where there are no dreamers, the people will certainly perish. But you and I, we are the music makers. You and I, we are the storytellers, the teachers and the poets. We are the men and women of vision and leadership. We are the legions, the saints and the champions. And we are the dreamers of dreams. Why did Matthew Kelly say this? Points, we are the teachers. We are the men and women of vision and leadership. We are the legions, the saints, and the champions. We are the dreamers of dreams, he says, so that people will certainly not perish because we are needed. This invitation we are needed makes me realize that my life depends on this invitation. In fact, it is First Peter chapter 22. Chapter 1, verse 22, that says, Now that you have cleaned up your lives by following the truth, love one another as if your lives depended on it. This invitation we are needed is a call to love other people because they are needed, and we are doing this because our lives depend on it. In fact, this invitation we are needed reminds me that I will be killing two birds with one stone. Listen to Romans 14 and verse 18 makes mention of these interesting words. Your task is to single-mindedly serve Christ. And let me add the words, who needs us. Do that and you will kill two birds with one stone, pleasing the God above you and proving your worth to the people around you. Why are we proving our worth to the people around us? Because those people need us because we need them. Number two, because God above needs us and we also need him. Number three, this call we are needed allows us and gives us the opportunity to tell other people who are feeling worthless, who are still in darkness, who don't understand the character of God, that they too can be transformed from nothing to something. I got these words, very interesting words, from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 9. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and 
speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he has made for you. And verse 10 says, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. Why are we calling them from nothing to something, from being rejected to being accepted? Because indeed they are needed. This call we are needed reminds me it will allow us to be get saved, irrespective of who we are. We are needed, irrespective of how broken we are. We are needed. Listen to these last words I'm reading from the book of First Peter, First Timothy, chapter one, verses twelve and uh, up to fourteen. Paul, Paul writes these interesting words. I am so grateful to Jesus for making me adequate to do this work. He went out on a limb, you know, entrusting me with this ministry. The only credentials Paul makes mention, I brought into it, were inventive and witch hunts and acted in the field. He came witch hunting. He came with arrogance. But I was treated mercifully because I didn't know what I was doing. Didn't know who I was doing it against. Verse 14 says, grace mixed with faith and love poured over me and into me all because of Jesus. And he says, let me read this. I think I was not going to read this, but let me just finish up this verse 15. And he says this interesting word. Here is a word you can take to the heart and depend on. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. I am proof, public sinner number one, of someone who could have never made it apart from sheer mercy. And now he shows me off evidence of his endless patience to those who are right on the edge of trusting him forever. So as Paul moves around, as God moves around with Paul, he's showing him as an evidence of his grace so that everyone who is in the verge of giving up can be able to see that indeed they are needed if they were inventive witch hands and arrogance like Paul, but grace mixed with faith and love being poured into all of us can turn them into righteous saints like Paul, then they have a place in God's kingdom at the end of the day. My dear friend, today the invitation we are needed is given to all of us. Not after you have shown yourself to be good enough, you are still needed. Not after you have given all your money to charities, you are needed. Not after you have memorized the entire Bible, you are needed. Not after you start dressing and eating appropriately, you are indeed needed. Not after you've learned to preach like Peter and pray like Paul. Today, the call is given. You are in need, indeed needed so that you can also invite other people and let them know we are needed. May God bless us this evening as we get into his Sabbath, knowing that we are needed and we can be able to extend this call to other people and tell them indeed they are needed. Can God depend on you is my question as we close this evening in Jesus' name. Amen and God bless all of us. Amen, amen. May the Lord depend on you. Loyalty is but his due. Say, O oh Spirit, brave and true, that he may depend on you. We are needed, you are needed, I am needed. Uh, I would like uh, at this moment you share uh, the prayer request that we have tonight. It's been a very powerful sharing. It's been so powerful. Personally, I'm uh, blessed and uh, may the Lord depend on us. May the Lord depend on us uh, this day. It actually reminded me of a story. In the meantime, let's keep our prayer requests coming. Uh, you can privately chat me or you can privately chat the speaker for tonight, or uh, you can just share it out uh, via the chat to everyone. Uh, once I was in church and then there was this child who said a story uh, that uh, uh, 
a kid and the and the dad were actually going to school and uh, while while being dropped at school they had an accident and then uh, the not not really an accident they actually oversped uh, and then uh, they were actually fined so the dad actually gave the kid uh, some amount to go and uh, pay to the police uh, to cater for the fine which uh, he didn't pay in time and the next and the next time each and every time each he was given a task he did not accomplish it in time and that actually applies to us as christians uh, when the Lord gives us tasks that we may accomplish, uh, sometimes we don't do it in time. So tonight, may, may the Lord, uh, can the Lord depend on you when you're given something to do? Can he really trust you that you're going to do it? Uh, he's been faithfully uh, leading us and guiding us. Uh, can he depend on you tonight? Thank you so much for that powerful sharing. We are needed. I am needed and you are needed. So we have to uh, actually uh, ensure that uh, we do our part as uh, just as the Lord has done his part. Meanwhile, uh, continue sharing your prayer request. I have one request that came in from the chats. Uh, yeah, and I see it has been handled. If you'd wish to get to Jared's contact, it's in the chat and uh, yeah. So uh, for the prayer request that I have from my end, I'll start with the first one. The first one is uh, remember all those who are still struggling to get jobs. Uh, this Sabbath, may you remember those who are still struggling to get jobs. Remember the sick who are in hospital and at home. Uh, yeah, those are the prayer requests that I have from my end. If you have any, you can take a minute or so and uh, share it with me or uh, with uh, the speaker for tonight and then we'll pray together as we summarize tonight's session i hope i'm not locking anybody out you can uh, privately chat me or you can just write it on the chats for everyone uh, you can privately chat me if it's a private prayer and you want me to air it out as anonymous uh, then you can chat me privately i'll be able to read it as anonymous uh, if it's a public prayer, you can just write it on the charts. So, so far, so good. Uh, Star says, uh, pray for my grandfather. Uh, remember to pray for Star's grandfather. And then uh, Joseph says, remember the medical missionary training that's ongoing at Gotkayayo. So remember the medical missionary training that's ongoing at Gotkayayo. Any other prayer request I, as we get into the prayer session? Okay, I think so far those are the prayer requests that we have from our end. Uh, Jared, you can lead us in prayer. Uh -huh. Let's uh, believe and pray. Father in heaven, we are very grateful. And uh, we don't know our worth. We can only comprehend that you left everything for us. And today we are convinced beyond reasonable doubt that you need us. May your need of us inspire our need of you too that we can be able to be motivated to look unto you, Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, and to beckon on our brothers and sisters because they are also needed in thy kingdom, so that we together can be with you where you have always been with the Father. That was your prayer, Jesus, in the book of John, when you are calling unto the Father that you wish that the ones that you have given, the, he has given you, be with you also where you will also be with the Father. We thank you for the sick, whatever they are, some of them in the hospital, some of them at home. I didn't know I will be mentioning this prayer again, even for my dad who was discharged from the hospital today. You want to commit all of them into your very able hands. Lord, you need them in thy kingdom. The devil has brought a lot of maladies in their problems. At some particular point, it's because of their lifestyle. We pray you forgive us. If it's because of what the devil is inflicting, trying to malign your character in our lives, please hold our hands 
and continually show us that we will not fail at the end of the day. So we can only lean on you and so that you can depend on us at the end of the day. We thank you for the grandfather of our brother Charles, who is also feeling unwell. Lord, provide healing masses according to thy will and riches in grace. To the medical missionary training that is currently ongoing, may your spirit abide with the people who are attending, impressing the mind of Jesus upon them, showing them love, and imbuing them with the spirit of missionary that will be able to draw the entire world to the kingdom. The world is languishing in problems. We, we are suffering from corona, but you as children can be able to get us because of your knowledge, the hubs that you have committed to us for the healing of the saints, to be able to teach us how we can be able to live during these last days as we anticipate your soon second coming. Watch over us this night. Bless us these hours of the Sabbath and draw all of us closer to you than I've ever been before. This be our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless all of us. Amen and amen. I want to invite Timo. Timo, if you're in, maybe you can share with us your vote of thanks. Tim, can you hear me? Okay, seemingly he's fast. So uh, let me just thank each and everyone who managed to join tonight's session. I believe it's been a blessing for you the same way it has been a blessing for me this night. In a special way, I would like to thank our tonight's speaker, Jared Okello. Uh, thank you so much for that powerful sharing up. Personally, I have a lot of reflections to do tonight, and I believe uh, most of us also have a lot of things to reflect on and uh, uh, with the urge that we are needed and how we can be useful in the service of the Lord. Thank you so much for taking your time and sharing with us this evening. Uh, we just want to pray blessings uh, that the Lord may remember you in a special way and uh, may also meet you at your points of need. So, and uh, thank you so much everyone who managed to join and uh, those who've uh, always been joining us. Remember we were live on uh, Facebook and YouTube and uh, we also have a WhatsApp platform where you'll be updated on uh, all the meetings that we will be having. So if you're not yet on our platform, I will share with you a link so that you can uh, join the WhatsApp platform and get all the updates. You can also like our Facebook page, We Are Muscle. The link is uh, on the charts. Our YouTube channel also, We Are Muscle. The link is also on the charts. Remember to subscribe so that uh, in case you miss any, any session, you'll always find uh, a recording posted on the channel and you'll be kept, uh, you'll be up to date. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Uh, I wish you a good night and a happy Sabbath, wherever you're going to gather tomorrow. Ensure that you pass our regards, pass our love, and uh, remember God loves you. I'd like to uh, invite Tony to share with us one item as I'm sharing the WhatsApp link. I can get that from the... Uh, I'll share the WhatsApp link via the chat as uh, we get the final piece, and then. Uh, we call it at night. Happy Sabbath. Happy.